<laughs> Troubleshooting GNS3 error 206. This is a very common one. It's very frustrating. Let's say we have a project in GNS3. You go back, you try to open it up, and it won't even open up the project. How do you solve something like that? Well, the answer is quite simple, and it's the focus of what we're going to learn in this micro nugget. Let's jump in. Our objective in this micro nugget is really simple. We're going to take a look at what it feels like when we have a project in GNS3. We launch it and it comes up with an error message. It won't start. And then more importantly, we'll take a look at why that happens, how we can identify the exact problem and then fix it. Let's start by launching a project that's having a little problem. The launching of GNS3 is pretty darn simple. I just double clicked on the icon for it. I'm going to say I want to open a project. And we're going to go to a project called test1. We're going to grab the topology.net file for that project and click on open. Now, unfortunately, it has this 206 unable to create UDP network IO error. And that's unfortunately where most people stop. They think, wow, how do I fix this? How do I get around it? The issue is that GNS3 was trying to use some ports that are already in use. It's also telling us what kind of ports. Let's take a look at the details of our current computer and that topology.net file to see where the conflict might lie. To do that, let's dismiss this error. We'll close GNS3 altogether, and let's bring up the files involved in that. Here is the actual topology file. Let's right click on that. We'll say, I want to edit that network file, and here's the details for it. Now, what this is specifying, which is pretty important to be aware of, it says some of the ports involved. It's got a TCP port involved of 7200. That's our local loopback address. It also has a port of 10,000 that it's using for UDP. The challenge is, if either of those are in use, we're going to have a problem with either Dynamips or our project coming up. Let's take a look and see what's currently open on my local computer. I'll make sure these are side by side so we can see them both. And to ask the computer exactly what's open as far as ports are concerned for TCP and UDP, we do a netstat dash an. For help, we can do a slash question mark. And that'll give us all of our options. We're going to use dash a, and we'll do the dash n, which says don't bother doing name resolution. So with a netstat dash an, let's go ahead and launch that. That's all the open ports and listening ports on this computer at the moment. What we're looking for is we're looking for anything in the TCP 7200 and UDP 10,000 that might already be in use, which would prevent GNS3 and the back end of Dynamips from using those ports. So I've got GNS3 closed at the moment. Let's take a closer look at these. Now they're sorted, which is handy. So we have our TCP ones on top, and I'm looking for 7200, and I don't see it. It would be right in this range right here if it was present. I don't see it there, so let's go to the, the loopback address. I don't see it here, and we'll scroll down to the 192.168, and I don't see it here either. So I don't see it currently active. Here's some IPv6 open ports as well. And let's take a look at the UDP next. 10,000, is it in use? If we scroll down here, look at that, son of a gun. There it is, it's in use. Now, for whatever reason, we could argue with it and say, hey, how come you're using that? And we could dig into it, and find out what's using that. But the reality is, my computer right now is listening on port 10,000, and that's why this base port of 10,000 isn't working out too well with the actual GNS3. So to fix it, how do we fix that? It's so easy. We'll just get out of its way. We'll say, well, you're not using 10,001 as a base port. Let's go ahead and use 10,001. We'll save this topology file by clicking on Save. We'll go ahead and close it, and then we'll launch it again. And this time, when we bring up GNS3 with that file, because there's no conflict, it should bring it right up. At least that's the theory. Fantastic. That's a lot better than the error message we had previously. And also, if we go back to the command line and issue that command one more time, and take a look at the details, you'll notice that now it's starting with the base port right here of 10001, and it's also using some additional ports. So the base port was 10001, and in my little topology, I have several connections, so it's keeping track and using those additional ports as well. If I close GNS3, those 10001 and etc. would go away. Now, one last thing I want to share with you. We fixed this project. Now it comes up, we're all happy. But what about the next project and the project after that? If we want this not to be a perpetual problem, we might want to tell GNS3 to not use that same base port for future projects. To do that, we go to Edit, and under Preferences, we select Dynamips right here, and go ahead and simply change the base port. So on this machine, instead of using 10,000, I'd go to 10,001. And by the way, I had already made that change because I was literally having this problem on this system. In this micro nugget, we looked at the all too common function of not being able to open up a topology file. We used netstat to figure out what ports were in use. We modified the .NET file and then brought it up. 
We put a little icing on top of the cake by changing the edit preferences for GNS3 to tell it that for future projects as well, we might want to use a different base port that wasn't already in use on this local machine. I've had a lot of fun. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.